Alright, today we're going to be learning about function operations and compositions of functions. And basically both of those things are just different ways of putting functions together. So, for function operations, let f of x equal x plus 1 and g of x equal x squared minus 2x minus 3. Perform the indicated operations. So number 1 just wants us to take f of x and add it to g of x. So f of x plus g of x. And then all we have to do to add those is combine like terms. So we get x squared minus x minus 2. And that's as simplified as that can get. Number 2 asks us to take g of x and subtract f of x. So we're going to take g of x. And we have to subtract all of f of x. So make sure you distribute this negative to both of the terms in f of x. Now that we've distributed that negative and got rid of the parentheses, we can combine like terms again. So x squared minus 3x minus 4. Number 3 asks us to multiply f of x times f of x. And you should remember from previous units and previous math classes that when we have two things together being multiplied, we need to FOIL it out. So we get x squared plus x plus x plus 1, and then combine like terms. And then our last problem, we're going to divide g of x by f of x. So g of x divided by f of x. We cannot simplify this anymore. It just stays like that because we have all these plus and minuses in here. Um, we'll learn more about how to simplify things like this in the next unit. So we're just going to leave it for now. Now, if f of x equals x plus 1 and g of x equals x squared minus 4, evaluate the following. So evaluate just basically means plug in. So we're going to take whatever's inside the parentheses and plug it in to that equation where the x is. So for f of 2, we're going to plug 2 in for the, for the x there. So we'd have 2 plus 1. And then for g of negative 2, we're going to take negative 2 and plug it in where the x is in g. So plus negative 2 squared minus 4. We can type that all just in one line in our calculator. So 2 plus 1 plus negative 2. Now make sure that you are using parentheses when you're plugging in negatives, minus 4, and we get 3. Number 6 says f of b. So what it's saying is take b and plug it in where the x was. So we would just get b plus 1. And then number 7, f of x plus 2. That means take this whole thing, x plus 2, and plug it in where the x is in f of x. So we would have x plus 2 plus 1. Since there's nothing out in front of these parentheses, there's nothing to distribute, we can basically ignore them and combine like terms, and we would get x plus 3. Number seven is basically an example of a composition, which is what we're going to work on next. So for h of x to equal f of x of g of x, the domain of h is the set of all values such that x is in the domain of g and g of x is in the domain of f. And I'll show you what that means when we get to the end of these problems. So here we have g of x inside the parentheses of f. So that means we want to take g of x and plug it in for the x there. So 
what I'm going to do first is I know that g of x is equal to x squared. So I'm going to take x squared and I'm going to plug it in here. So now I have f of x squared. So since I know what x, that x squared is what's in the parentheses, I'm going to plug that in. That and plug it in for this x. So that becomes 3x squared minus 2, which just simplifies to 3x squared minus 2. As far as the domain goes, basically we only have to be concerned about domain restrictions when we're dealing with fractions and radicals. Since we don't have any fractions or any radicals, we just have an exponent here with the x, we know that our domain is negative infinity to infinity. You'll see more examples of domain restrictions when we get to the next slide. So for g of x of f of x, that means this time we're taking g and we want f of x inside, so 3x minus 2. So that means we're going to take this whole thing and plug it in where the x was in g. So we'd have 3x minus 2 squared. To simplify this, what does squaring mean? It means to multiply it by itself. So we're going to multiply it out. 9x squared minus 6x minus 6x plus 4. Combine like terms. That's all we can do to simplify. And then since we have no fractions or radicals again, our domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. All right, so this time f of x is 2 over x and g of x is x minus 2. So first one, f of g of x, we know it's going to be f of x minus 2. And then the x minus 2 goes in where the x was. So we'll have 2 over x minus 2. Here, we do have a domain restriction because we have a fraction and we have an x in the denominator. We know that we can never divide by zero. So we need to figure out what's going to make this whole denominator, this whole thing, equal to zero. And the easiest way to do that is to go off to the side and take the denominator and set it equal to zero and solve. So we've got two to both sides. So we know that if x equals 2, that's going to make this denominator zero. And that can't happen. So our domain restriction is x such that x does not equal 2. So in our next one, we're going to put f of x inside of g. So we're going to have g of 2 over x. So we're going to take 2 over x and that's going to go in for the x in g. So we have 2 over x minus 2. Now there is a way to combine these but you guys haven't learned it yet so we're just going to leave it like that for now. In the next unit we're going to learn how to combine a fraction and a whole number. For our domain restriction, the only thing in the denominator is an x, and the thing that will make that is 0 is 0. So our domain restriction is x such that x cannot equal 0. All 
All right, on to the last type of problem. In these ones, we're going to combine our evaluating from earlier, which remember evaluate means plug in, and we're going to do compositions. So what we're going to do first, G <coughs> is inside F. So we're going to take our G function and plug it in to F. So 5 times X squared minus 4 minus 2. The nice thing about these is we don't have to simplify them at all. We're going to use the calculator to do that for us. So we're going to take the number inside now, negative 2, store it for X, and then we're going to type this on our calculator. So negative 2, store for X, and then type the problem we made, 5 times X squared minus 4 minus 2. And it simplifies to negative 2. So let's try another one. This time we're taking F and putting it in G. So 5X minus 2 squared minus 4. Take the 4 that's inside and store it for X. So 4 store for X. And then type the problem we made. 5X minus 2 squared minus 4. And we get that it equals 320. Notice how there was no x's in the original problem, and there are no x's in our final answers. Number 14 asks us to take g and plug it into itself. So we're going to have x squared minus 4 squared minus 4. Take our 3 from the inside, store it for x. store x, x squared minus 4 squared minus 4. We get 21. That's all for today.